Hello and welcome to this quick little video about how to install something like a Walksdale HD FPV system into an RD Pilot plane. Now this has been getting easier and easier over the past couple of years so now it's nowhere near as tricky as possible. Now I have already done quite a few videos in this series so do go and check those out telling you all the different setup steps. This is the last thing I'm really doing before I take it out and maiden it, I like to fly these things FPV. I like to have my on-screen display. In terms of the wiring, let's do that bit first. Time codes down below if you just want to jump to the software setup in Mission Planner. Out of the Walksnail system, there are four wires, two of which are power. The way that I do it is I tend to run uh, power from a power distribution board. The really good thing about this is that there is a 12 volt, three amp supply that's part of the power distribution board. I've run that up here into a JST lead and there's a JST lead here as well. I have confirmed that it outputs 12 volts, actually puts out 12.2, uh, but that's perfect to run the walk snail system. So that's the power bit done easily. The reason I have this separate is that I like to power everything up, go through things like calibration of the compass and stuff at the field, make sure that the GPS back here gets the lock. And the very last thing that I do is plug the power in because these things get incredibly hot when they're sat on the ground. In the nose, where it's actually going to be installed in a minute when I've shot the video, I have this little cradle here at the side, uh, links on Thingiverse to it. This is the piece with a couple of strips of lollipop stick, uh, super, super high tech. And the way this works is that just holds it in place and keeps it off so that the plastic doesn't melt. Uh, we have the camera is obviously go, going to go in the camera slot and there's a single slot on the top for the antenna to come out of. So that makes a super neat installation. And it's one also that when I want to move the water snail unit into other things, I absolutely can. That's just the way I'm doing it here. Next one then is the transmit and receive pair that come out of the unit. Now, uh, it's very easy to get these backwards. And if you get them backwards, it isn't a disaster. The way I've done this, it goes into a connector here on the side. That connector is part of a cable that goes here into Telem2. Uh, Telem2 is currently not used for anything else, and we can configure that for DisplayPort, which is what we need, and also set it up as well. Now there's only two pins that we need on this output. Uh, this is going to be the receive and transmit pin. The first pin is normally power. The last pin is normally ground. And then you have another couple. The easiest way to do this is just to look at the documentation. All of the pinouts for all these ports are actually clearly labeled and it's quite easy to figure it out. So that's how we've done it. So we have both the power set up so we can plug it in and we can power this thing. We also have the transmit receive pins and it's going into Telem2. Now Telem2, as far as Ardu Pilot is concerned, is Serial 2. And again, you can check that mapping by just having a look in the documentations and seeing how that goes. Sometimes it's obvious, other times it's not. And it really depends on the flight controller that you're using. So let's jump onto the computer and what we'll do is first of all we need to go into config and we need to tell ArduPilot that we're going to be using MSP. So we need to go into the full parameter list. We need to look for something called OSD type. So over here on the right hand side I'm going to type OSD underscore type and the by default, it's going to be set to zero. You need to set it to five, hit enter and click write params. That's going to tell the flight controller that we're at MSP display port, which is what, if you have played with walk snail on systems like beta flight and INAV, you'll be going, okay, that looks pretty standard stuff. The next thing we need to do then is because it's plugged into Telem2, which is serial to uh, in RG pilot, we need to look for serial two protocol. We need to set that for 42. 42 is, guess what? Display port. And that basically tells RD Pilot that the display port MSP stuff should be coming out of that port, which is great. We need to set the board as 115200. You can leave the options at zero, write those params again, and then reboot the flight controller. I would just unplug it, count to five, and replug it back in. We can confirm that that's been set up. If we go into the setup tab, mandatory hardware, go into the serial ports, we shall see that serial port two is now running for display port. 
We can also set the bit mask. This is the same bit mask that we've just looked at. You can do some kind of cool things in here like swap, transmit, receive. If you get your wiring wrong and you realize you've done those two things and you've soldered everything together, these kind of cool things are done. But by default, we don't need to change any of that. Now that's all set up, we can actually configure the on-screen display. So what we need to do in here is go into configuration, then go down to onboard OSD. It sounds like a really weird thing to do because it's not on board, is it? It's walks now, but this is kind of a legacy thing. Now, if you have come in here and there's just one line and it says OSD type zero, this is because you haven't rebooted the flight controller or you haven't set the OSD type to five. Now, each of these screens you can set up and you can do loads of different things with. Let's just do the basic stuff for now. I would recommend that um, you come in here the only thing that I really change in this stuff, to be honest, is the OSD units. I set them for Imperial because guess what? I'm an English guy of a certain age. So miles and feet make more sense to me than meters and kilometers. So I will just change that. Apart from that, I'm not really going to change anything else in here. If we go into the screen one, let's uh, set it for a HD layout and put it on decrease so it appears all on the screen. Here we actually have the ability to drag and drop things around just like we would normally and then to write the customization. What this is doing is this, these are all the different things under here that you can turn on, home direction, home distance. By clicking them you can set them and then all this stuff is being changed. The only thing that I do is change the OSD font text resolution to one. Not convinced you need to do that anymore, but it's just an old habit and it seems to work really nice. So this is the layout that I've got. Be aware that the actual layout itself uh, for walk snail is slightly bigger than this screen is showing. The way that I tend to do it is power up the goggles, have it so I can see the on-screen display and then drag things around live. I hope that future versions of Arduino Pilot will give us the options to have a screen that's actually set up perfectly and you can kind of choose the layout, whether it's Walk Snail or DJI or Open IPC or whatever. So once you've done that, write your customization so that it is going to be done. Again, you can set up, set it so that you have an arming screen, a disarming screen. You can pick which one of those that you want. Personally, I don't do any of that. I would just set it up like this. And then once it's all running, you can kind of relax with everything. In fact, the only thing I will do, because I'm going to put that up in the corner. Let's write that customization. Okay. Now that is set and you have that all laid out, the only last thing to do then is to power it up and check it in the goggles and have a look how it actually appears. Be aware that the Ardu Pilot on-screen display system is kind of expecting the far end to use an OSD font specifically for Ardu Pilot. I load custom fonts onto my goggles using the fantastic sneaky uh, FPV stuff. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and check that. Make sure that you have those fonts loaded as part of your custom fonts and select them and it will all appear absolutely beautifully. Sneaky does a fantastic job. You can actually in here change the OSD font type to emulate Betaflight, but why the heck would you do that when Sneaky makes such beautiful fonts that work so gorgeously with things like Ardu Pilot. So that's as easy as it is. There's only a couple of gotchas really. I found that not all ports are created equal. I tried to set this up on uh, GPS2 and leave my Telem to port free. I couldn't get it to work on that one. So, you know, just be aware of that. If you're trying it on a port and it isn't working, try another port would be my top tip. And so long as you've got those handful of things set up, you should be good. And don't forget, if you are using things like the Walksnail system or any of the systems that support the sneaky FPV custom fonts, I would upload an Ardu Pilot font so you've got that handy. I use the Contrax is the one you've seen in my goggles. So hopefully that helps. I'm just going to put this last bits and pieces together and then it's finally ready for a maiden flight. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.